So hi everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your week to learn and cook with us this evening. As Nancy said, my name is Isabella and I'm the senior account specialist with the OceanWide Seafood Program. We are so thrilled to be involved in this exciting and exciting collaborative event and highlight some of the ways that we can still make positive impacts, be part of a global movement and enjoy delicious sustainable seafood in a safe and COVID friendly way. So I hope you guys are hungry. Um, so for those of you who are unaware, I wanted to take a few moments to provide you with a brief overview of the Oceanwide Seafood Program. So as a consumer, if you're gonna go to a restaurant and pick up a menu, you'll most likely see a seafood dish with little to no information on its sourcing. Maybe it just generically says salmon or shrimp or whitefish with a description of the dish. Well, as an informed consumer, not having access to information such as where that option came from or even what species of salmon or shrimp it is can make it very difficult for you to make a positive choice for the environment. And this is exactly where we come in. So the Ocean Wise Seafood Program, we are a not-for-profit conservation and education program. And we work directly with key actors within the seafood supply chain, such as chefs, seafood suppliers, retailers, and even culinary schools and have established a network of hundreds of partners across Canada and beyond that covers thousands of business locations. Our ultimate goal is to make access to sustainable seafood a very simple and easy choice so we can avoid supporting unsustainable seafood options. And we work with our partners across the supply chain to identify and highlight the sustainable options that they have to offer. So all the consumer has to do, AKU, you, is look for the ocean Y symbol on menus and fish, count fish counters across the country. So overfishing is one of the greatest threats that's facing our world oceans. And we believe that sourcing sustainable seafood can help to curb these impacts. But let's talk a little bit about sustainability. Uh, so OceanWise recommends both farmed and wild seafood options. And we consider sustainable seafood to be seafood that is coming from stocks that are healthy and abundant, well and adaptively managed, and has limited impacts on the surrounding environment and other species. So one really big issue that we like to highlight is the impact that fishery operations can have on other species. So it's really important to ensure that there's proper management in place and also correct harvesting methods are being used to help drastically reduce the impacts that we have on other species when we're trying to catch a specific thing. So when a business becomes a partner of the Oshawa Seafood Program, they're demonstrating that they value where their seafood is coming from. And we want and really want to be part of the solution by curbing the impacts that they're making as a business. So many of our partners remove unsustainable items from their menus when they learn about the impacts that those dishes have. And throughout the partnership, they're able to continue to add more sustainable options to their menus to make more sustainable choices available to you as end consumers. We definitely encourage you to go out and support Oceanwide Seafood Partners when you want to enjoy seafood. And we work with so many incredible partners and so many unbelievably passionate individuals who really, really take pride in their ability to source sustainably. Live Green and Fresh City have been fantastic partners of our program for many, many years, and they do an excellent job of utilizing their platforms to educate their staff, consumers, as well as their audience about why it's important to care about sustainable seafood and ensure that we're curbing the impacts that our purchasing decisions have on ocean resources. And working closely with partners like this really helps us to ensure that together we can all continue to move the sustainable seafood movement forward. So Live Green approached Oceanwide Seafood for this collaboration because we're currently running our national fundraising event, which is the National Chowder Chowdown Festival across Canada for the entire month of festival, for the entire month of February. Uh, this event is a really fun way to support local businesses, help raise money for our not-for-profit program, and also find new businesses that will help you as a consumer support sustainable seafood. So we have over 50 participating locations across Canada that are selling 100% sustainable seafood-based chowder. So each business is actually uh, recuperating the cost of producing the chowder, and they're adding a donation portion on top, which will go to support our program. And we are so proud of the dual purpose of this program, of this fundraiser, because we're encouraging consumers to prioritize sustainability, but we're also encouraging consumers to support our amazing partners during this extremely difficult time for the hospitality industry. So if you would like to learn where you can purchase your chowder, including one that was created by Fresh City and is available right now, uh, please go to ocean.org slash chowder, and there's a participant map where you can find a bunch of different businesses that are involved. And we guarantee that it will be an absolutely delicious experience. 
So we're going to jump right in. And now I just want to do a quick introduction for Chef Lorraine Holly. Um, so growing up in an Ontario farming community, for Fresh City Farms Chief Production Officer Lorraine Holly, a love of baking, cooking, and fresh food came naturally. A career in food, however, took a longer path. After almost 20 years in sales and marketing in Toronto, Lorraine left the corporate world to follow her passion. Together with her husband, Lorraine opened Mabel's Bakery in 2008. Mabel's became well known for high quality traditional baked goods and prepared foods. Lorraine and her husband sold Mabel's to Fresh City Farms in 2018, thrilled to have found a company that shared their passion for tasty food and the local farming communities. Today, Lorraine is responsible for a team of 60 who make the wonder who make the wonderful house-made products for Fresh City Farms, Mabel's Bakery, and the Healthy Butcher. Lorraine, take it away. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining in today. I'm very excited to share with you this recipe. It is fairly easy to do. It is delicious. It uses sustainable seafood. And it's a very versatile recipe, which we'll talk about as we get rolling. And I think I'm a bit echoey. We'll soldier on. So the first thing we're going to do is start with our cooking oil. And I've chosen a coconut oil because this dish is all, um, is based on coconut milk and just thought that would marry well. It's also a great oil for cooking. And I'm just gonna warn, you that we're get all, gonna get a little bit of a, of a buzz from this induction burner, but I'm told that you will soon not hear that in the background. So we start with three tablespoons, very accurately measured, of an organic coconut oil. And we let that heat up and come to temperature. I've prepped in advance a few things, and if those of you who are following along, uh, this was part of the initial instructions. I've washed and peeled and sliced a fairly small dice, I don't know which camera's better, of uh, slices of the leeks. Um, these are beautiful organic leeks that are fresh. I adore leeks, so I always have some old ones uh, tucked away at the back corner of my fridge. Uh, in this recipe, because we're going to sweat these out and soften them up, you can use uh, any old sad leek that you have kicking around. It was sweat three leeks, and it makes them just over two cups that I've got here. Uh, just going to be another quick minute to melt this. Oil, get that hot enough. Um, just one note on the leeks. I'm sure everyone knows to uh, give them a good wash. And the older the leeks are, the more the sand uh, sticks into them. So it's nice to give them a really good soak, then rinse them. I like to do it after I peel off the outer layer and then uh, do that after I slice them because then the water can get through and get through all the little bits. So my pan is hot enough. We're going to put in our leeks, toss those around just to get coated in the coconut oil. And one of the other things I prepped was my piece of ginger. I am not the biggest strong ginger fan, so I'm keeping my piece whole and I'm going to fish it out afterwards. But we're going to throw it in with the leeks just to infuse the flavor. If you really love ginger, feel free to mince that up or finely slice it or cut it into little sticks, whatever turns your fancy. And if you're more like me, you just have to remember to fish that out at the end, or someone's gonna get a um, very funny tasting piece of potato. That must smell okay. incredible. <laughs> I'm just gonna put the lid on that and let that sweat out a minute. And maybe this would be a good time. We probably need two minutes for uh, Isabella to talk to us a little bit more about sustainable seafood and how people, obviously you can get it at Fresh City if you're in the greater Toronto area and at all of our uh, grocery locations as well as online, but how Isabella can people find uh, sustainable seafood and be sure of what they're getting if they're outside of the area or happen to be in another uh, fishmonger, grocery store, et cetera. 
Yeah, happy to provide more information. Obviously, Fresh City is a fantastic place to get sustainable seafood. They have a, quite an extensive list of sustainable seafood options that are available. Uh, but we work with a lot of different partners across Canada, whether that's chefs who are designing menus or retailers with fish counters. So for those of you who are looking for sustainable seafood options to choose from, I definitely encourage you to go to our website, which is seafood.ocean.org. Um, and you can check out our partner map. So on our partner map, you will find all of our different partners across Canada available easily. Um, some honorable mentions, if you're looking for a fishmonger in the key dots, I definitely recommend Delamere. They are a fantastic partner of ours and a huge supporter of sustainability. Um, a couple other ones, if you're looking for smaller retailers, obviously Fresh City has retail locations. Um, Organic Garage is another one. Um, and if you're looking for large retailers, Sobeys. But we also partner with a bunch of restaurants and we definitely encourage you to take a look at, um, at that list as well. Great, thanks Isabella. While we're still waiting for that to finish up, I'm going to season this halibut. This was a, can you all see that there? This was a pound of halibut uh, that was frozen that I got from Fresh City. Um, I let it, I brought it out of the, I happened to be home today, so I brought it out and let it thaw on the counter. It took about a little under two hours to thaw completely and I threw it back in the fridge. I'm um, in lieu of making one of my tea towels smell like fish or using paper towels, I've just used the paper bag that my potatoes came in. So the only seasoning in terms of salt and pepper that this recipe calls for is on the fish itself. So I'm going to be reasonably jealous, or generous, not jealous, jealous of the salt, I guess, with the salt and pepper. Got about two teaspoons of salt, and I'll do about a teaspoon of pepper. I'm going to freshly grate, and then we'll just let that sit while we do the rest of our... We got a quick question from the audience that says, how can we please make Lorraine full screen? So we're actually showing oh. both screens on purpose because we wanna be able to see her cooking in the ingredients as well as see her beautiful face as she speaks to us. So if you remove the uh, Q and A on the bottom, if, on the bottom right, if you just click on the Q and A and you remove that, it will make her a little bit bigger if that helps you. That's sweet that you wanna see more of me. So our leeks are looking pretty good. Now we're going to throw in our garlic. I know that some uh, people in the industry don't love this stuff, but I think it is a game changer at home. And I love garlic. So this is pureed garlic. You can feel free to use uh, fresh, obviously. It calls for one tablespoon. I'm going to make that a heaping tablespoon because I love it. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of turmeric. A three quarter teaspoon of coriander. And half a teaspoon of cardamom. And the only uh, seasoning I'm going to be a little bit more fussy with is the cardamom. I don't want to be too heavy on the cardamom or it'll start to taste a little bit more desserty than before. We're just going to toss that in to coat all of our leaves. Just for a few seconds until you start to really get the aromas of the garlic and those beautiful organic spices. At this point, I'm going to throw in my potatoes. I have I pre dice them. You can peel them if you want. Um, I've done just to bite sized pieces. You can use, these are a yellow potato, an organic yellow potato, but you can use any smooth fleshed potato that you like if you prefer red potatoes. Uh, anything really but a uh, starchy potato like russet will work beautifully in this. I'm going to toss that so the potatoes also get coated. And then I'm going to take my coconut milk, 
if you didn't have a chance, I warm these up on my radiator. I just find it's easier to get all of the delicious coconut milk out. And then you don't get that um, splash back when you've got the fat that's left in there. So we're dumping that right on top. And then we need a little bit of water. We need 175 mils of water. So this can's 400 mils, so I'm just gonna go a little less than half here. That right on top. We had another quick question from the audience. Someone was curious for the finished product. Um, how long would it keep if you, fr and can you freeze it well? So I wouldn't make this dish expressly to freeze, um, but it, uh, it will freeze for sure. It'll last in your fridge two to three days. It's best obviously um, today and then tomorrow it's still really lovely. And then your fish will start to be just a little flaky and then eventually it'll go off. But yeah, two or three days in your fridge after you've made it, you can definitely throw it in the freezer, but I wouldn't, this isn't a recipe that I would make a giant batch of and stock my freezer with. Um, I would just, but if you had leftovers, it can certainly freeze in your home freezer for three or four weeks without any problem. Just when you reheat it, make sure you don't bring it to a full rolling boil, just gently so that you don't overcook that fish. Thank you. Okay. So I've covered up my pot and we're gonna let those potatoes cook out. And I've got a couple of beautiful crisp organic celery stalks that I've washed. Just gonna hack off these ends. You can save those for stock or nibble on them later. And we're just gonna thinly slice these. Now they're saying with the leeks that you can use the old leeks or onions that are hanging out in your the, the bottom of your fridge, but this celery is almost more of a garnish at the end of the dish. We're gonna cook it a little wee bit, but you want it beautiful and crispy and crunchy. Can you tell me what inspired this recipe that you're making today? Sure. Well, if, if anyone has been on the Fresh City website and seen the chowder that we made for the, uh, the event, it's a really classic chowder with a fish stock and you cook all of the fish separately and it's beautiful and rich and heavy and creamy. But it's, a, it's not something that you'd probably want to make at home unless you had all day and or could track down some fish stock. And this one is a little bit easier to ex execute at home uh, and it's also great because it's not quite so heavy not that i don't obviously with mabel's love a heavy uh, gluteny dish but it's not quite so heavy and it's it's gluten free it's dairy free so it's a great option if uh, you don't love dairy or dairy doesn't love you or you're having guests who are dairy free and you can execute this in 45 minutes after you you know after you get home from work or at the end of the day when you're just figuring out what you're going to be cooking so that's why i chose this recipe for the demo um the, the, as opposed to the classic one which is which is lovely it's a little bit more complex and a little less of a, of a weeknight or accessible kind of meal well, I'm super excited to try this one after this. <laughs> um, and I can also speak to the, uh, the the Fresh City Chowder because I had it the other day and it was incredible. Seriously, everyone should go out and buy one. I'm just like, I'm not just plucking my own feathers here, I swear. <laughs> no, it's delicious. It definitely falls into the, the treat. Like it, that and a little piece of baguette and a long nap is perfect. <laughs> Lorraine, this part of this recipe is it's very versatile. You could make it with shrimp. If you didn't have the use the potatoes, it makes a beautiful base for mussels. Um, you could throw any type of fish in there. 
actually, speaking of which, Isabella, um, if you might want to chime in on some great sustainable options, um, we've used the aficionado halibut, um, but there's lots of other great fish that would, would be perfect in this dish. Yeah, there's a lot of really sustainable options out there. At OceanWise, we have over 1,300 recommendations for different seafood items, and that's different species and gear types and regions. So that just kind of dips your toe into the complexity behind seafood, which is the most complicated food system in the entire world. It's a fun fact for you to drop at your next post COVID party. <laughs> uh, and your halibut is definitely an excellent sustainable seafood option. So um, this is an option that's coming from Atlantic Canada, like you said, aficionado, incredible fishmonger uh, based in Halifax. Um, and this comes from a fishery that is very well managed and also extremely healthy. Additionally, it's harvested in a way that is not targeting other species. So it's targeted with something called a hand line, which is just like it sounds. It's a line and someone is pulling it in. So that kind of a target, a targeted way of harvesting is really sustainable because you're not catching anything else. And if you are, you can just unhook it and toss it back versus something maybe that's caught in a trawl. When you toss it back, it's probably not going to keep swimming. So a uh, great sustainable option. Um, there's also a lot of great uh, shrimp options out there as well from Atlantic Canada, like northern shrimp. They're the tiny little cold water shrimp, um, but they're really, really delightful uh, and fun to cook with. Um, but in Canada, we're, we're so fortunate that we have three coasts to play with, and there's just so many sustainable options that are available in our country, um, as well as even in Ontario. We have one of the world's largest freshwater fisheries, and everybody thinks Toronto's landlocked, but we have so much exceptional lake fish that you can get locally in Ontario that I definitely encourage you guys to, to start thinking about as a really good option that you can be purchasing at home. And is, is there also seasonality? Oh so man. The fish in Canada? Uh, yes, so there is definite seasonality with different fisheries. Sometimes it's related to regulation or migration patterns. Um, and even I remember when I started at OceanWise, we tried to create a document to represent seasonality for lake fish in Ontario, and it was close to impossible. So that, that's all I'm going to say for that. It has to do with access and when the boats are out there. Um, so I don't have a simple season that I can tell you generally for lake fish. Yeah, fair. Frozen fish is also a great option for getting some of, the, of those fish year round. Yeah, 100%. I think a lot of people make the assumption that fresh is better, but most of the time fish, when it's harvested from the ocean, it is flash frozen immediately, which actually retains a lot of the flavor and structure of the fish versus if you're getting something fresh. We live in Toronto, so if it's not a lake fish, how long did it take to get here? Um, it's something that people should be thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. I just realized I forgot to put in my hot sauce. There's always time for hot sauce. I'll throw that in now. I'm using a sriracha here. And I'm just eyeballing about a teaspoon. You can go more or less depending on your heat level. And you can see it's starting to bubble up nicely. We have lots of, uh, lots of options for hot sauce. You can really use your favorite. Naples has a beautiful one that's not quite as hot as this. It's lots of flavor. You'd want to avoid um, a real, like a Tabasco or a uh, Frank's Red Hot because it, just the, the vinegary aspect of it is something that you don't want to really introduce to the dish. But any of your favorite uh, hot sauces will work beautifully here. And can you tell me a little bit about why you're so passionate about cooking with sustainable ingredients? I mean, I think the sustainability is important to me. It always has been growing up sort of the way we grew up and making sure you used everything and you um, recycled everything you could. And obviously growing up in the country, I was a little bit more exposed to that. I think we're all though, as humans, just very connected to the, to the water and, uh, and maintaining that. There's something about the water that attracts all of us, whether it's the ocean or the lakes here in Ontario or the rivers and ponds and all of those sorts of things. That the importance of maintaining those for future generations is just really critical, as as well as obviously our 
our historic, our fishing communities and maintaining the uh, sustainability of, of those small communities that Canada was really partly founded on. So I like the water, I like fish, and I wanna make sure that everyone has fish and water to come. Amazing. Um, I just realized that I can scroll down in the Q&A and there are many other questions that I have not been asking. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, one question that was asked is what can we do with the green parts of the leaks? So I should have asked them. So the green parts of the leaks of celery um, can go in your stock. They also make a beautiful garnish. And maybe when Isabella answers another question, I'll sneak back into my fridge and grab uh, my green bits. But um, at Fresh City, we use them in our vegetable stock as well as our all of our meat uh, stocks. And in this dish, you can use it to garnish at the end. Okay, so the second question that's in here is, is there another white fish that can be used instead of halibut that you would suggest? Yeah, I'll let Isabella maybe talk about the best white fish from the Ocean Wise program. Oh man, halibut is an, an excellent option. Both Pacific and Atlantic are, are fantastic sustainable seafood options. So I think you're good to go with halibut. Uh, in terms of other white fish, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, I think the chef should speak more to the, the filet and, and the texture of the fish. Sable fish is a fantastic fish. Ling cod would be another really great one. Pacific cod, there's a lot of great fleshy white fish out there that I think would be great for this. And also all okay. sustainable options too. Yeah, I love the halibut in this dish. And if I, if I couldn't find white fish, I would probably actually go for uh, shrimp or mussels or... Um, or, yeah, I'd probably go shrimp or mussels. And someone is asking if you recommend using salmon. Would that complement well with this dish? Yeah, absolutely. Each fish, you might, you'd have to uh, monitor the cooking time a little bit, but salmon would be beautiful in this as well. So my potatoes, I'm just testing, I'm not just eating for fun. I'm just uh, testing the potatoes here. The potatoes are ready to go. We remove the lid, and that's what we're waiting for now. We're just waiting for the potatoes to get uh, tender, the fork tender or tender to chew. And we're going to lay our halibut on top. Use our ladle. Push it down. Just to get everything cooked nicely. We'll cover that up again. We're gonna let it go for about four minutes to get almost done before we toss the celery in. Is there anything that you could substitute for one of the cans of coconut milk? And you could obviously use actual, um, I'd probably use 18% cream, like a coffee cream. Um, you could use a cashew milk, an unsweetened cashew milk. Almond milk, I think would be a little bit thin. Um, yeah, I, I would, if you, if you Light cream and can tolerate cream, that's always a good option. Uh, you could also, you could do a fish stock, but you won't get as much creaminess as, uh, as we currently have going on. But if, if you're trying to avoid dairy, the cashew milk would be nice, or go with 18% or whole milk if you're trying to avoid drinking 18%. Like. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Um, there's another question here. Um, if you want to use clams, what kind of fresh clams would you use? Or would canned clams be a better option for this dish? I would definitely use fresh. Um, just give them a really good scrub and throw them in. The same with mussels. I would, I would definitely use fresh. You could, you could use canned in a pinch. Um, 
and I would even probably throw the juice in just to get some extra flavor. Um, but I would go with fresh clams, give them a really good scrub and throw them in and just uh, cook them as if you were cooking fresh clams any other way. Mussels, same thing, a really good scrub, toss them in, give them about five minutes till they open up and then use your shells to scoop up the delicious uh, soup. That definitely sounds like a good time. <laughs> And uh, just a quick sustainability plug too, uh, bivalves, which are the shells that kind of open and close like clams and mussels and scallops are all exceptionally sustainable options that we definitely encourage consumers to enjoy. Um, they're really great because they're something that you can farm in a very, very low impact way because they're filter feeders. So you don't need to feed them anything, which means you have zero inputs for a positive protein output. So when you're thinking of issues of food security and how are we gonna feed so many people, these are the types of things that we want to invest in to ensure that everybody can have a yummy and sustainable meal. Great, thank you. That's good to know because that is one of my favorite seafood options for sure. And super affordable too. Yeah. So my favorite part is coming up. I'm just going to taste for seasoning. You could do it with a spoon if you want it. And obviously, if you have any issues with flour or any guests who can't eat gluten, you wouldn't want to do this. But I just dunk in a little bit of a maple's baguette. Bread is always better than a spoon. For sure. That's good. It doesn't need any more salt and pepper. There's so much flavor happening in this dish that you can really keep it fairly low sodium. And I think the heat is pretty good too. So let's we throw have our Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's going to give it a little color. You could also use, if you're not a big celery fan, you could use um, bell peppers, which would also be beautiful. Instead, you just want to give a, the dish a little bit of crunch. So we're going to give it a couple more minutes, partially covered. Just soften up those a little wee bit. And I'm going to pour celery. I'm going to ask a question and probably make a big dummy of myself, um, but I'm willing to risk it. <laughs> so, Lorraine, are are you able to make this in a crock pot? Um, you could definitely use any heavy. I would say you could make the soup part in a crock pot and then when you got home add your fish because the fish really takes six, seven, eight minutes to cook. So you don't need a lot of time, but you could definitely have all the other things going on in a crock pot for sure. And you could, you don't need to, I've got my beautiful wedding present here. You don't need a Dutch oven. You could do it in any heavy bottom to a pot. Yeah, I'm totally crushing on your, your Dutch oven there. No, I, I like it. <laughs> If, if anyone looked in it before I started adding to it, you can tell it's been well, well loved, loved. well used. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I've just, thanks to that person who uh, asked the question, but these little leaves make beautiful garnish and they're perfectly edible too. There's no reason to toss it out ever. And then the end bits are great in stock. You just need to cut off this nubby bit at the end and you're you're good to go. I had someone ask about using evaporated milk for this recipe. Uh, you, you could do that theoretically, you'd have to just water it down. I would stick with, uh, I, I, I wouldn't use, I, I would say I would not use evaporated milk. You could do it in a pinch, you just water it down to get it more to the consistency of, of milk or of whole milk or heavy, or not quite heavy cream, but a coffee cream. But I, I think it'd be a little bit viscous. Got the most important part, my soup bowl. 
We're almost there. Actually, we're right there. You can see, if you can see in there that the fish is flaking apart beautifully. And at this point, if you're serving it in a terrine or for the family, throw in your paprika. Or if you were bringing bowls to the table, you could put the paprika on top of each individual bowl just for a nice presentation. Oops. And someone wants to know if you can use frozen oysters in a dish like this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would, I never thought of that, but that would be very tasty. I don't know, Isabella, do you know if many people sell frozen oysters? I've seen them canned and I haven't seen a lot of frozen. Uh, I haven't seen too much frozen oyster, but I guess it depends um, where you're going. I'm sure you could buy anything backpacked in, in large amounts and then it's easier. You don't have to shuck them, right? So I've definitely seen frozen um, muscle meat before. So definitely, yeah. Asian grocery stores. Exactly. That's that's what someone commented. I, I could oh, definitely okay. see those there. Yeah. But yeah, oysters would be beautiful. Yeah, you could do a medley as well. Easily do a medley. You just want to add, put everything in sort of the order of the length of time it cooks in. So the, the frozen oysters wouldn't take very long at all. So you put, you put your fish in and then layer in your mussels and oysters and it would be delicious. So I'm going to, I've cut this organic lime. I'm going to give it a little bit of a spritz. Garnish it with my beautiful celery leaves. And then find myself a spoon. And there we go, that's it. So you have a, mm, so good. You have a, a beautiful, sustainable meal and it's fairly quick and easy to do. That was super fast. Someone is asking if you can hold the bowl up to the screen. So everybody can see it. <laughs> oh, that's good. I think <laughs> that's incredible how fast that was put together. That looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So the prep that we did, the potatoes and the leeks that took maybe, maybe you know, 10 minutes to throw that together. So the whole thing comes together in about 40 minutes, which is great. It, it tastes like a dish that's been sitting in your crock pot or been on the stove all day. I'm going to hop back on the screen here and maybe we can get started with the Q and a session. Um, sure. so, so if anyone has, oh, sorry. sorry, sorry, it's Jessica. I'm sorry to pop on again and interrupt, but, um, we're, I'm wondering if it might be helpful to turn off, um, one of the cameras and log off. And the only reason why I say that is that might help the, um, feedback situation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. There we go. All right, can you hear me okay? Awesome. Great. Okay, so we did address a bunch of the questions, but there was one that was tossed in here that I wanted to chat about briefly because it would take a little bit longer to explain. So this is one for OceanWise. Um, and there, this is from Donna. She's asking, what are your thoughts on farmed Atlantic salmon? So for the OceanWise Seafood Program, um, the great thing about seafood, like I mentioned before, it's one of the most complicated food systems in the entire world. So there is Atlantic salmon that we do recommend and there's Atlantic salmon that we don't recommend. Um, for those of you who are not aware, there is no commercial fishery for Atlantic salmon in Canada. So if you are purchasing Atlantic salmon, it is farmed. However, there are some really excellent sustainable ways to farm salmon that are on land. Think of it like a massive aquarium. They're called land-based closed recirculating aquaculture systems. And the reason why these systems are exceptional is because they're closed off from the surrounding environment. So it's complete control within that system. They grow up the salmon. And once again, because there's control, 
They don't need to worry about using chemicals or antibiotics because they're not open to the outside environment. Also, there's no interaction that could potentially happen with predators within that area. There's no effluent, which is our nice sciencey way of saying fish poop that's going out into the uh, natural environment. And also the effluent is often repurposed for things like agricultural farming. So that means you're farming in a really, really sustainable way. And it's there's actually a few facilities in Atlantic Canada that do land-based closed recirculating um, salmon, such as Sustainable Blue, as well as Cape Door. So there's some really excellent practices like that. Uh, and even if you want to bring it back to Ontario, for those of you who don't know, there are land-based farms in Ontario for various species, including shrimp, white leg shrimp, which is a tropical species, tilapia, barramundi, even Arctic char, which is incredible. So there is a lot of sustainable farmed options out there. And I encourage you to, to learn more Look for the OceanWise logo when you're confused and just be comfortable to ask questions. Because even if there's no information on the sourcing, asking the question is telling that business that that's something that they should start prioritizing in their practices, just like Fresh City Farms does. Yeah, it's very yeah, funny. Yeah. Fish is one of the most confusing things for sure in terms of trying to purchase ethically and sustainably. Yeah, it, it can be very, very overwhelming. And I think when people are faced with the choice and the variety and then factoring in the sustainability, a lot of people just kind of disconnect like, okay, I'll just go eat something else or I'll go to a restaurant and enjoy seafood. Um, so another question that came up from Donna is, the ones that I buy are from Metro. Is there a way I could know where it comes from? So Metro actually, uh, they're not an OceanWise partner, but they do an exceptional job in that they actually put the species name and if it's farmed or wild on the actual product label, which is something that I've never seen another grocery store do. Sometimes it shows up on the label. Sometimes it shows up on the receipt that you buy it. Uh, in terms of grocery stores that we do partner with, I did mention a couple of like the smaller scale ones, like you have the Fresh City on site. Um, grocery locations, Organic Garage, uh, The Big Carrot, Sweet Potato, those are some of the ones in Toronto. But we also have a national partnership with Sobeys, who is a pretty big grocery store. They're everywhere. Um, and they do a really good job of labeling all of the options in their counter. And their staff are also trained in OceanWise, so they'll be able to talk to you about it. Uh, questions. What about sardines? Yes, okay. So, sardines... I think we recommend like one sardine fishery at this point, unfortunately. And that just has to do with the nature of that type of forage species because they grow like in boom and bust cycles. Like one year there's 20 million of them and one year there's 40 million and then they crash or they go down and then they grow up again. Um, and the other thing about sardines is they're actually a really important species for a lot of creatures in the ocean to eat. So us impacting those populations, like we have to be very, very careful when we do that. So I think there's one MSC fishery in Australia for sardines that we recommend. However, not as salty, very different, but we do recommend rainbow smelt that's coming from the Great Lakes, which is also a more local option. So if you want to get a little bit creative, that's uh, that's something that you should think about too. I didn't put smelt in this dish, but it's one of my favorite. We grew up smelting in the rivers, yeah. Oh, so amazing. Good. So good. That must have been a really cool experience. Yeah. Okay, I don't see, just double check, I didn't skip any questions here. I think we're good. Um, I see MSC more regularly. What's the deal with MSC ratings? Are those good? So excellent question. MSC is the Marine Stewardship Council and they are a certification program. So they are very different from what we do. We're a recommendation body. Think of us kind of like an umbrella. Like we have a standard that we follow for sustainability and we recommend a bunch of different things, including MSC. So MSC is actually working with third-party auditors who are out on the boats doing the certification for these fisheries to maintain their sustainability. Um, and in terms of purchasing sustainable seafood, I definitely encourage you to use something that you're comfortable with. Look for the MSC logo. ASC is another one. That's the Aquaculture Stewardship Council, which is the farming counterpart, which is a much higher standard for farming, which is really great. Um, and then, of course, ocean-wise, like as long as you're looking for something that's reputable and third party, sometimes businesses will put something generic like responsible and have a fish on it, and it doesn't actually mean anything. So just be mindful that the word sustainable and responsible, they're very malleable terms that a lot of businesses use. So just think about the legitimacy behind those claims. Yeah. 
Here's some relaxing music playing. This is nice. Oh, my husband has obviously tuned out to the fact that I'm doing this right now. <laughs> it's perfect. It's very ambient. I like it. <laughs> my cat is also meowing. But... What about anchovies, Isabella? Is there anything in the world of anchovies? Must we be anchovy free forever? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure for anchovies, we don't have many recommendations either. Uh, it, once again, it's, a, it's another species with a boom and bust population, which makes it difficult mm -hmm. to have surveys to see how the population is doing. Because a really important part of sustainable management is having a lot of data available on the fishery over a long period of time. So we can understand the overall health on the stock and therefore understand how much we can impact that stock before it becomes a problem. Um, is bassa fish safe to use in this recipe? That's one for you. Is bassa fish? Yeah, you. I would as long as it's not too oily. I think it'd be it would be great. Uh, the only thing I would that, that that people have mentioned that I think wouldn't be great is uh, is sardines. But I think um, bass would be beautiful, or any of our like lake like pickerel or. Um, yeah, walleye, pickerel, any of those fish would be beautiful. Another yeah, question is, pass. yeah, uh, I've always been curious about what kind of fish can be used to make sushi at home. I am not a sushi maker. Um, I think if you go to a reputable fishmonger, though, they will have sushi grade of various fish. Um, and I would speak to your fishmonger about that. You want to make sure, um, because you're eating it raw, that it's handled safely and uh, all of the protocols are followed to make sure there aren't any worms or residual anything. So I would, I would talk to your favorite fishmonger about that. Unless, Isabella, you have some tips there. Uh, yeah, we work with a lot of different businesses that have uh, sushi-grade options. Um, one is Skipper Auto. They're based in British Columbia, but they actually deliver here in Toronto. So I buy from them a lot. And what they are, it's quite interesting. They are a community supported fishery. So typically the way fisheries work is the boats go out on the water, they catch the fish, they bring it back, they sell it for the market price. That kind of option means that sometimes for sure the fishing community has to be dependent upon loans to cover their costs before they get to the end of the season. So the way um, the way Skipper Auto works is you as a customer pay in, say you want to pay $200, $300 for a share, and that's the amount of seafood that you are going to get when the season starts. So you pay that in at the beginning of the year, and that money then goes to support the fishing communities throughout that season, and it gives them a better and more sustainable income so that they don't have to be more, more vulnerable to all of the expenses associated with fishing. Um, and they sell sushi, they have like sushi grade salmon and stuff. I actually went to one of their parties where we made uh, sushi with uh, the salmon from Skipperado. So that's definitely um, a good option. Um, and exactly like you said, I think talking to your local fishmonger, they are extremely knowledgeable and they'll be able to, to guide you and tell you uh, what would be the best options to eat at home. But definitely yeah, something that has been frozen. Yeah, you want to sure. frozen. <laughs> yeah, the flash frozen and, and you want it, yeah, you don't want to just grab any uh, salmon or whatever you're trying to make and, and eat it raw. You want to make sure you've talked to someone about it before. And it's designed for that purpose. Uh, all right. Is there ocean-wise recommended sushi restaurants in Toronto? Yes. We only have a handful, unfortunately, but they are exceptional. Uh, so Kazumoto, which is located in Yorkdale, if you really want to treat yourself and be fancy, they have exceptional sushi uh, for a really good time. Um, we also have Hapa Izakaya, which is on College Street. They also do uh, really, really fantastic sushi rolls. Um, and the third partner we have is a little bit more high-end as well, and that is Miku Sushi. So there's two locations for Miku. There's one in Toronto and one in Vancouver. And the one in Vancouver actually won, I think, top five best sushi restaurants in Canada or the world. It was something really high. I should remember that, but I don't. Uh, but that just goes to show how good it is. And they're really famous for uh, I think a, a type of sushi where they blowtorch the top of it. So it's just slightly cooked uh, and press sushi as well. Oh, so good. Now I'm hungry again. That sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I have my sushi. Yeah, <laughs> you have something to hold you over. Um, there's another question here, and it says, 
does it mean that the fish is healthier to eat as in less toxicity? Um, so when it comes to toxicity in fish, the Oshawai Seafood Program, we base our recommendations on the most available science for the sustainability of fishery and aquaculture. So we actually are not nutritionists and we try to avoid speaking to things that are beyond our, the scope of what we do. So we definitely encourage anyone who's interested in issues related to toxicity in fish or bioaccumulation of chemicals to talk to a nutritionist. Uh, there's a lot of great resources. Um, I think on the Canadian government side of like nutritionists. Uh, so I'm sorry, I can't really speak to that anymore. I, yeah, I, I got the fish news. I got the scales, I got the gills. <laughs> All right, there's lots of other stuff coming in here. Not a question, but oh my God, this chowder is so delicious. It's from Mark. Oh. <laughs> it is so good. Uh, and then we have another question from Margaret. Where would you like us as consumers to throw our financial support towards? Who needs our dollars? Well, obviously, like I mentioned, go to our website, seafood.ocean.org. You can go to our participant map and you can look at all of uh, the partners that we work with. We work with a lot of different types of businesses from independent chefs, caterers, Culinary schools, restaurants, I definitely encourage you to support restaurants during this time. Obviously, the Chowder Festival is one of the ways that we are trying to do that. So please also check out ocean.org slash chowder, and you can learn about all of the different participants that are involved in the event. And maybe when you order a chowder, you can also order a bottle of wine or order some apps and amp up your order so that we can continue to support the hospitality industry while everything remains shut down. What are your thoughts about canned tuna? Some say dolphin safe. Okay, so the way that they used to catch tuna um, is called, well, I, some still do, it's called dolphin set persining, which is where dolphins will be jumping over because they are eating a school of tuna. The boats would then see those dolphins and then take a persine net, which is a net that wraps around a school of tuna and has a drawstring at the bottom to pull up. And they would indiscriminately also catch all of the dolphins in that association. So that was detrimental to dolphin populations for a very long period of time. They have put laws in place. So when you see dolphin safe tuna, what it means is there's an onboard observer making sure that the way they're harvesting that tuna, that they're not impacting dolphins or as many dolphins. Um, yeah. So that is, that's what that symbol means. So definitely, if you're buying tuna, please at least look for that symbol. Uh, we definitely also recommend pole in line caught tuna, which is individuals on the back of a boat with a with a, a pole, literally catching it one at a time. I honestly hope that you go to YouTube and look it up because it's so entertaining, uh, and it's it's very surprising to see how quickly they're they're catching them one at a time. And that type of a harvesting method, because you're catching them one at a time. If you catch something that's not a tuna, you can unhook it and put it back. And the impacts to the environment are so much more minimal because the impact is so much less. I, th I think I hit all the questions. We crushed it. Amazing, <laughs> Isabella. Thank you, and of course to you as well, right? And I know, I, I know I've know, i already said this to you, but I'm going to say it again. I am like the biggest fan of Mabel's. Your food is so good. Oh, the, the cookies. Oh, just, I'm just, I'm going to nerd out for a second because I, I love her so much. <laughs> Me too. That's why sometimes you guys, a soup like this, you can balance out your carbs with your a little bit more healthy. You guys are making me so hungry and poor Lorraine <laughs> is sitting there with that soup getting cold. Honestly, it's so beautiful. It's funny. I have had uh, texts and uh, messages from people who are on and watching who've made the soup and they are in heaven right now. Okay. Loving it. Loving it. Um, and Isabella, a, a shout out to you from uh, an old pal of yours, Kim Stemshorn, who's a uh, one of my uh, colleagues at uh, Environment and Energy, she says hello. Um, so there's a little hello from, from Kim. So um, thank you so much, Lorraine and Isabella. Uh, 
Before we leave, I would like to offer uh, or mention this exciting offer from Fresh City for Live Green Perks customers. For those who don't know, Live Green Perks is the City of Toronto's free green business directory. You can search hundreds of local shops to find or discover uh, green products and services. Many of these shops also offer deals and discounts exclusively for Live Green Perks users. And Fresh City, here tonight has an awesome deal for new customers available exclusively in the live green perks app two months of free delivery so to take advantage of this deal search fresh city in the free live green perks app the app's available for download from the apple store um, and uh, google play store search live green perks three words um, and this deal is only available until the end of the day friday so get the app now to take advantage of this great deal from fresh city so um, everyone, that concludes this evening's workshop. On behalf of the City of Toronto, I'd like to thank our partners at OceanWise and Fresh City, my colleague Jessica Chow for putting this uh, the whole show together tonight, um, and to all of you for joining us here this evening, tuning in and cooking along. Enjoy your chowder and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.